Six things that get more expensive as the Fed hikes rates. So the Federal Reserve increased the federal funds rate yesterday. So here is how that decision might damage your finances. To no one's surprise, the Federal Reserve raised its benchmark federal funds rate from oh, increasing it by 50 basis points and then putting it into a range of 0.75% to 1%. The Fed took the action as part of its widely publicized campaign to bring inflation under control, and several additional rate hikes are likely between now and the end of the year. As we have pointed out many times, an increase in the federal fund rate which is the rate that banks charge other banks for short-term loans, always creates winners and losers. Some people benefit financially from rate hikes, others suffer. And many of us experience a little of both. So the positives of rate hikes, primarily higher savings account and CD returns, are great. But in many ways, they pale next to the potential damage that rate hikes can inflict on your finances. So following are some areas of your financial life that are likely to become more expensive now that the Federal Reserve has once again raised the federal funds rate. So carrying a credit card balance. Failing to pay off your credit card bill in in full each month is never a good strategy. But once the federal funds rate rises, things become much worse for those who carry a balance. As you likely have noticed, your credit card rate does not remain static over time. It is a variable rate that can go up and down, and when the Fed raises rates, lenders typically increase these variable rates in response. That is because the federal funds rate has a strong influence on the prime rate, which is the rate commercial banks charge to their most credit-worthy customers. Banks use the prime rate as a starting point for setting many other rates, including credit card rates. So expect your credit card rate to rise after this latest hike. More importantly, prepare now for many additional federal funds rate hikes and the likelihood of steadily increasing credit card borrowing costs. The best way to avoid this danger is to pay off debt as quickly as you can. And here's the thing, if you want to learn how to get a debt, go to fortiumbox.com. So buying a home. There is a widespread myth that when the federal funds rate climbs, rates on fixed mortgages follow right behind it. That isn't so. There is no direct connection between the federal funds rate and the fixed mortgage rates. However, the two do tend to move in the same general direction. So if the Fed continues to hike rates repeatedly, it would be unusual if mortgage rates went the other direction and began to fall significantly. Also, if you already have a fixed rate mortgage, nothing will change with your payment. That rate is set in stone and Federal Reserve rate hikes do not affect the terms of an already established fixed rate loan. If you have an adjustable rate mortgage, ARM, though things are different. A rising federal funds rate is more likely to cause your borrowing costs to rise, which is why you never go with an adjustable rate. ARMS adjust periodically according to the terms of the loan. Depending on the benchmark your loan is tied to, your rate may move north in tandem with the federal funds rate. Refinancing a mortgage. Mortgage rates have moved sharply higher recently. And a raise in the federal funds rate won't help reverse that trend. Still, that doesn't mean you should reject a mortgage refinance out of hand, even after the Fed's decision. As we noted in the previous section, rates on adjustable rate mortgages can be particularly sensitive to hikes in the federal funds rate. So if you have an arm, it might be worth considering refinancing into a fixed rate loan even if that loan is likely to be quite a bit more expensive than it would have been six months ago. Purchasing a car. If you have the cash to buy a car outright, you're golden. An ascending federal funds rate will mean little to nothing for your finances as you look for a new vehicle. But most of us are not that fortunate. Instead, we require an auto loan to finance our purchase, which is why you should never buy a brand new car, especially if you don't have money. Thanks to the Federal Reserve's latest move, rates on all loans are likely to push higher. 
If you need this type of loan, which you shouldn't, make sure you shop around for the best rate, and if you can afford it, you might also consider making a larger down payment as a way to defray some of those higher interest costs. Renovating your home. Americans love home sweet home and they tend to pamper their abodes by renovating them at every opportunity. If you have used a home equity line of credit or HELOC to finance a past renovation and are still paying off what you borrowed, prepare for your cost to rise. HELOC rates typically are variable, meaning there's a good chance your lender will respond to a rise in the federal funds rate by increasing the rate on your outstanding loan, and sometimes HELOCs will have like a balloon payment. Starting a business. This is an under-the-radar impact of a hike in the federal funds rate. Many small businesses borrow money to get started, and these loans may be tied to variable rates. For example, the Small Business Administration 7A Loan Program, the SBA's most widespread loan program, offers variable rate loans. As we mentioned earlier, these are the types of loans most sensitive to changes in the federal funds rate. So, if you are a small business owner looking to borrow, your costs may be higher now thanks to the Fed's latest move. So feel free to give your thoughts on this. I thought this was a pretty interesting read. And here's the thing, right? This is why you should get out of debt as fast as you possibly can. Because if you're out of debt and you get like an emergency fund and you're already automatically investing towards your future, to your retirement, none of this even matters to you. Like literally none of this matters to you. Maybe... Getting like a, a loan for a home, maybe, but everything else just does not matter because you'd be buying a car in cash that you could afford. You'd be basically buying any item that you want in cash that you can afford. You're never going to be like margin called. You're never going to be in a risky situation and you're never going to have to call, like pay more simply for having a loan because you shouldn't even have a loan, right? If you get out of debt and you stay out of debt, literally none of this matters to you. You're going to be able to keep your monthly costs roughly the same forever, right? Which is a pretty nice thing, right? It's nice being able to wake up every day to where you're not stressed out about making your monthly payment, okay? That is like a very, very refreshing scenario, right? Because you do not want to have to wake up every single day for the rest of your life with the stress of having to make your monthly payment on time, right? And imagine if you didn't make your payment on time. You'd be screwed. You have to pay so much more in extra fees that is disgusting, right? So do whatever you can to get out of debt first and foremost because that gives you so much more financial freedom to basically allow you to do whatever you want to do later down the line. Because you are not held in possession by these banks, right? You're not held in position by the government, right? You have the freedom to go do what you want. You have the freedom to go spend money on what you want without really worrying about anything. We'll see you in future episodes. If you want to learn how to get out of debt, go to 40 com.